Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast Special Edition Show. Tonight, I'm going to be joined by the great Bobby Thompson. He covers the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for Bucks Report, the New England Patriots for Ramblin' Fan and Fan Sided. He's been on the show before. He is somebody that has a blue check mark by his name on Twitter and deserves it because he's so great at what he does. We will also, other than talk some football, talk about episodes five and six of The Captain. We'll talk about the five-game losing streak and subpar play over the last month plus from the New York Yankees and the situation going on with Kevin Durant and the Brooklyn Nets ownership and front office. So a lot to get to with Bobby. Should be a lot of fun. He's one of my favorite guests to have on the show. So hope you guys enjoy it. Now I'm joined by the one and only Bobby Thompson. He has not been on the show in a long time. How are you doing tonight? Doing it. Always a pleasure to come on, Madison. Happy to be back. Absolutely. All righty. So um, we'll get to the NFL in a minute. There's a couple things I want to discuss first. Um, so the captain. We've watched every episode thus far. I've had guests on the recap each episode. And the most recent ones we've had on were five and six. What did you make of those episodes? Well, these past two episodes, are re- what I've really enjoyed is just, you know, you're seeing things that we haven't seen before in terms of how Derek is, the way he went about his business as Yankee fans. We all um, know what he means to us and how hard he worked and how, you know, winning was everything to him. And I said this in... A tweet, he just has that, I call it the Jordan and Tom Brady-like mentality where they're cold-blooded assassins and will do anything and everything to win. And if you're not about winning, then Derek doesn't like you. I love when Derek said that. Listen, if you're about winning, that's fine. I don't have to be your friend, but if you're about winning and you're on my team, then we're good. I I love that. And then one thing I take from this entire series, including episode uh, five and six, is um is the uh, fact he said loyalty one way is stupidity and I feel that I relate to that a lot. It's just that he's just all about the Yankees. He did everything about it. Every, the Yankees were his life, and love to see it. Now the, about these these last two episodes, the one thing that really uh, watching Derek in his final seasons when he broke his ankle in the playoffs it was just really tough to watch and you hear about just how miserable he was at home it's just seeing that and just seeing how much like it took out of him was pretty upsetting but the one thing i love about this documentary is just how it dives deep into things that we don't know about and that's what makes a great documentary all right we were just saying about the captain the the great unknowns in terms of uh what we didn't see coming and I absolutely loved that story in the um, twenty um, about the start of the twenty eleven season when Derek was a free agent and how um, the Yankees didn't really lowball him per se. It was more of an right. offer of um, what they felt he was at the moment, and that's how the Yankees run business nowadays. Like that negotiation is a great example of how the Yankees do business nowadays. So I think that was a big takeaway from uh, these past two episodes for me. I agree. And I'm glad you said that. It's You see a side, and the one thing I find funny is how he said he didn't like talking to Brian Cashman because, first of all, in my opinion, Derek Jeter – to the Yankees, he's the captain, he's the heart and soul, he's the engine that makes it all run. And yes, he was at the back end of his career. Yes, he was. He did have some good years, but you know, he wanted to stay, there was no doubt about it, and he just wanted to keep it private. Uh, Obviously, they differed from compensation part, as of course they always do. And, you know, at his age, he got a pretty decent salary. What did he get? I think seven, what was it, 17 million a year? If I'm not mistaken, he got... I think um, it was 16. 16 million a year. There we go. So he... The one thing that was interesting to me with Brian Cashman is he's like, oh, you think you could get better? Go out and look. Like, I, I, to me, I would work with Derek 
like differently. I understand that's how the Yankees do business and everything. And I, it, I, I'm sure you saw this how he talked about Troy Tulowitzki and Hanley Ramirez as guys he was looking at. Like to me, I get it at the time those two were at the top of their game, but to me, listen, it's Derek Jeter, man. It, I, I still, to the, when I saw that. I actually rewound it. I'm like, he really said this to Derek, really? Yeah, that's what I thought was crazy too. That's like, um, I hate to bring the Patriots into this. Like, that's like the Patriots picking someone like worse than Tom Brady to replace Tom Brady. I understand they went in different directions. He ultimately went to the Buccaneers, but it's similar to Brady, except Brady actually left. Yeah. It's extremely similar. That's how the Patriots do business. They give you an offer they think is Bill Belichick thinks is fair, and if you don't like it, he lets you test the waters, and he always asks you to come back with their final offer and sees if he can match it. And Brian Cashman was doing that. Obviously, Derek was never going to go anywhere else. During that, I remember like it was yesterday when – that was all going on in those negotiations. I never thought that Derek would leave. Oh, me neither. Honestly, either. I always knew that they would figure it out, but honestly, it just was bad. And even in the reporting, he, and during his press conference, how mad he was like, oh, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I'm pissed that it wasn't private. Like, I'm like, damn, you guys really pissed him off. Yeah, they did piss Cheater off, but ultimately he came back, and uh, he should have been back, and uh, we know how... Uh, the career ended. So episode seven is going to be about his final season and probably that final Yankee Stadium game and that final game of his career at Fenway Park. And by the way, I was at Derek Jeter's last Yankee Stadium game. That was an incredible atmosphere. For his walk-off hit? Yeah, against Baltimore. I was there in the building. Please tell me you have video of that. Um, I think I do. Oh my God, that's you got to cherish that forever. That's one of the, literally, I remember I wanted to go to that game more than anything in 2014, and the ticket prices were astronomical that it was, like, impossible to go. Oh, my mom and I bought the tickets, like, in April, like, because it was, like, a just-in-case kind of a thing, because we weren't sure yeah. if they were going to make the playoffs or not, and we did the same thing with Mariano. We went to Mariano's final home game, too. Like, we bought the tickets in March or April, like, thinking, like, you never know. They might not be in the postseason. And sure enough, neither of those years they were in the postseason. So it was just luck was on our side. And, and that was a really smart decision by you and your mom, too. Trust me. Oh, I know. And both of those teams, neither of those teams were very good. They won 85 and 84 games. But, like, they weren't, like, god-awful teams, per se. I mean, the Jeter game, the walk-off was just an amazing game to be at. And... That place was going bonkers, and everyone just went wild when they showed Andy and Mo and Jorge and and uh, Joe Torre on the screen. And I think Tina was there too after Jeter hit the walk off. Everyone was losing their minds. Oh yeah, it's it's just insane. Just that game, how it all played out, and it played out just the way it should end with him getting a walk-off hit to have the Yankees win. That, what better way, the captain clutch, the, to me, one of the greatest Yankees to ever live, to end his career the way he wanted to and the way he go out like that, it was awesome. And then, of course, his nephew with that meet with one of the greatest gifts I've ever seen. Oh. Of, uh, him tipping the hat. Love it. That's a great meme. And, um, or the, that's a great gift. I, not rather than a meme, rather a gift. But, um, Then the Orioles were their opponent that day, and the Orioles, by the way, were playing for, um, I don't know if the AL East was wrapped up by them, but they were still playing for, like, home field advantage in the American League playoffs. So the Orioles, that was a game they needed to win if they wanted the one seed. So that's a subplot that nobody talks about regarding that game. Yeah, absolutely. It's, that game was, when it all came down, I, I love how, at the end, it literally all came up to Jeter, and literally, in my and I, it was on the. Am I not mistaken? Didn't he uh, get that hit? With the, he, did, it was his first pitch he, he got to, or first or second pitch, and he hit it and got it. Oh, the walk off hit was the first pitch. Yes. Yeah. So that was just to me, one of the greatest 
I, I still, I, I watched it on YouTube the other day and it still gave me goosebumps. Oh, I get goosebumps from watching it all the time. And you know everybody's going to be having goosebumps on Thursday night when they show that. Absolutely. I love it. I can't wait to, when watching this documentary, to me, I love, I love documentaries and finding out things that we didn't know about. Like with, for example, not to get off track, uh, with the last dance, you find out how Michael, everything Michael Jordan was thinking about Jerry Krause and everything like that. And then with Man in the Arena, which nobody talks about, Tom Brady's documentary, love that, especially for me being a Patriots fan and finding out things I didn't even know about. And then with Derek Jeter, this is just, I just love how things that were behind closed doors, you find out now, I'm like, damn, imagine we knew about this now, back then. My God, I know. I think about that all the time. So, we're talking about the Yankees. Um, five straight losses for the Yankees. I don't think anybody expected that after the trade deadline. I just think a lot of bad luck has caught up to them. What do you think about this? Uh, in my, it's a bad five games. And going to an out-of-division, out-of-league uh, series against the Cardinals and getting swept is completely and utterly unacceptable. Um this Yankee team, we to me, they started out the season hot. I feel like at the, ever since the All-Star break, they've really cooled off. And this is where you cannot afford excuse me, to cool off. you got teams like the Astros who are hot, who the Yankees have problems with. The Baltimore Orioles are coming out of nowhere in the division. Uh, you still got to deal with the Rays, the Blue Jays, and... The thing is with the Yankees is that, to me, it's just the pitching is just not working. Montas in his first start yesterday did not look good. Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole, I don't know what is going on with him. He's really been struggling as of late. But it's it just seems like they're – I don't know. What do you think, Madison? I feel like the, they, they, they seem really – it looks like they're worn out in a way. Yeah, I don't disagree with you about them being worn out. I think the injuries have caught up to them with Stanton, especially Michael King. They miss Severino. So I think the injuries have caught up to them a little bit, and that's something that nobody talks about during the hot start. They had nobody was hurt. No one. Now people are hurt, and now they're losing games. Yeah, no. It's, the injury bug is be, it has bit the Yankees at the worst time because at this time now we're in the – we're now in the second week in August, and we got, what, six, around, what, six weeks left of the season, if I'm being, if I'm correct, maybe? Probably seven, maybe eight. I'd say seven, six, though. Seven weeks of the season, and you can't cool, have cooling down periods like this. It just can't happen. They got to keep winning. Uh, home field advantage is going to be huge. So I mean the Yankees are still in great shape. They got a nice, they got a good record, but these last five games are really a cause for concern. I will say that definitely. Oh, for sure. But I did mention I feel like there was some bad luck in there and some fluky things. Like that Cardinals game on Friday night felt very fluky to me because Clay Holmes comes in. He was I know he's been struggling, but infield hit. There's nothing you can do about it. It was just a slow roller. And then he fell apart after that. And then let's say if that doesn't happen, then he gets out of the inning. So it's just like little things like that that have really been bothering me with these teams. There's a, with the Yankees, it's just a lot of like little things that just come back to bite them with bad luck. Yeah, it's and as I alluded to before, it's just the it's coming at the worst time. Oh and yeah, we can't have this happen. The Yankees, you know, to me. Um, I think Aaron Judge, I just want to say this season, Aaron Judge has been, I, I don't think he's human. I think he's just really showed how how good he really is. And I know he's playing for a contract, of course, but uh, I'm just really happy to have him. He's been, he the knock on wood, how healthy he's been. He's been there for everything. Um, this is going to really, these next, these next seven weeks are going to be telling because they got to get on track. I know it's a five-game losing streak, but listen, this is a, this was a bad five games. It was bad. I know I agree with you. Friday night was a fluky loss, but unfortunately, that's in the lot that num that game is in our loss column, which we couldn't afford. So we just got to keep grinding out wins, 
and go into the dog days of September ready to go. That's right, and it's funny because we're talking about the Yankees' five-game losing streak, and that's probably not the biggest story in New York sports right now. Breaking news came this afternoon that Kevin Durant told Joe Sy, the owner of the Nets, that he basically said, pick me or pick Steve Nash and Sean Marks. What did you make of that? Um, first off, I'm a, I, I really do like Kevin Durant, but and it's pretty telling that he has a problem with Steve Nash as his head coach. Uh, I think that's uh, kind of foolish. I mean, choose him, your star player, or your head coach. I mean, what is an owner going to do? I mean, like, you're, you're in a lose-lose situation. But the thing is, to me, I feel like Kevin Durant's already checked out. I mean, he's made his stance known. He's not happy. He doesn't want to be there. To me, I don't understand what the issue is. I mean, he, he chose to go there a few years ago. He chose to try to win a championship. Obviously, they let, that the fact that Kyrie Irving, him, and James Harden couldn't get it done, but it, it, to me, is baffling. Like, those are three of the best players in basketball, and I don't understand but uh, to me, I think that that story when I saw that, it, it, Kevin Durant is, you know, Kevin Durant knows what he wants. So he, he makes his demands, he's hoping to get it done. But I'm sure you saw the three teams that are interested. What was it? The uh, Celtics and what's the other one? Uh, Toronto. I forgot. Yeah, there we go. So uh, it, it's going to be interesting. But for me, I, I think that, to me, I think Kevin Durant's checked out no matter what the owner decides to do. It, he's checked out. He made his stance known. Oh, I think he's gone. I think he gets traded before the season, but I could be wrong. And maybe they do make a surprising move and fire Nash and Marks, but that would just be insane if they did that. I would just trade the rant at this point because I think it gets, yeah. I think it's a lose lose situation for the Nuts, but I think ultimately uh, they do trade the rant and try to get a good return. All right, let's move on to the NFL. Um, it's the sport that. You cover the sport I love the most. Um, the preseason started on Thursday night. What is your most interesting storyline heading into the preseason? Um, well, first off, I have to agree that football coming back is the greatest. How much I, we both love the game of football. It's finally back in our lives after a long off season. But to me, you know, the one thing we could start – for, honestly, there's a lot of uh, quarterback battles. We could talk about the one today uh, in Carolina. The quarterback battle between Sam Darnold and Baker Mayfield, which I can tell you right now, I've been hearing and everyone that Baker Mayfield, it's his job to lose and that the Panthers are shopping Sam Darnold. So here's the thing. I don't think anybody takes him at his current salary. So a release is imminent, in my opinion, if nothing pans out with a trade. So... Keep an eye on that. That's going to be interesting. I want to also see with San Francisco how Trey Lance plays in the preseason because he's going to be the starter, obviously. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo is still on the team, but they're waiting. They're taking their time to see what they do with him next, which obviously is going to end up in a um, releasing, in my opinion. But that's going to be interesting to see how it goes. I also want to see with the Giants how their new offense looks. I mean, it, uh, I'm sure you've heard – Madison that today was not a very good day for the Giants at camp and Daniel Jones who's obviously playing for his job and playing for um, his Giants tenure because if he doesn't do anything the Giants are going to move on they didn't pick up his fifth year option so good to see how that pans out with the Giants how Brian Dayball and this offense are going to throw everybody in and keep an eye on Wondell Robinson that guy is going to be a stud. I love what I see from him. Uh, tag teaming him with Kadarius Tony in the slot is going to be a deadly one-two combination. Uh, I'll even go to this. I assume the, my team, the Patriots. I want to see how the offense looks. Patriots don't have an offensive coordinator right now. It's, it's going to be Joe Judge or Matt Patricia calling plays. So on Thursday when the Giants play the Patriots, we'll see how that goes out. Yeah, that's going to be very interesting. The Patriots with the uh, unknown and offensive coordinator. I thought about that in terms of uh, interesting subplots. You mentioned the one that's most interesting to me, and that's Jimmy Garoppolo's situation with San Francisco. There's talks right. about his him getting released, like you said. Um, And if I'm a team 
like, I don't know, the Saints? Would that make sense? Um, I don't really know. They brought back Jameis, so I don't know. I always liked the idea of him on New Orleans. Like, does he go to Seattle? They can use help at quarterback. I mean, they still have talent on their roster. What do you make of him in Seattle? I think it makes a lot of sense. Do I think it happens? No. I think if, honestly, it's their quarterback room is Geno Smith and Drew Locke. And Geno Smith is winning the job. That's what they're saying. He's doing great in camp. Obviously, he knows the, the uh, system because he's been there, but he's really outplaying Drew Locke, and that tells you a lot. That's telling about Drew Locke. But I think Jimmy Garoppolo to the 40, uh, forgive me, uh, the Saints, the, wow, the Seahawks makes way too much sense. It should have happened a long time ago. But do I think it happens? No. I think the team to keep an eye on, I'm going to keep saying it, I think the Browns are a team to watch out for for him. I know they have Brissett, but – with the uncertainty with Deshaun Watson, with what's going to happen with him. He is suspended six games, but it's going to be uh, – you see how that plays out. But to me, Jimmy Garoppolo could go many places. I've heard a lot of the, the Giants floated that around. I don't think it happens. Oh, no. Um, if the Patriots didn't have Matt Jones, I would say New England makes too much sense because we all know Bill Belichick loves Jimmy Garoppolo. Um, however, uh, to me – I agree with you. I think the same in terms of the Saints, they're paying a lot of money to. They gave Jameis some a good con. Well, not a good contract. They gave him a lot of money. They they don't have they 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 have no cap space. They're not going to be able to afford him. The Saints are in cap space hell for the next few years. Hmm. Um, and being able to afford him, well, if he gets re- if he gets released, he's going to have to sign like a really short deal to go to to go to Seattle. So, you know what? Thinking about it right now, uh, I, do you want to know what I think? I think if there's an injury to a quarterback, I think that's when he signs. I don't think he signs right away. I think if there's going to be an in, if there's an injury to one of the starters, that's when, like a season-ending uh, injury to a to a starting quarterback, that's when I think he signs. How about Pittsburgh possibility for uh, for Jimmy G? I heard rumblings about Trubisky struggling at camp and. We don't know oh, about Kenny Pickett. Think, with Pickett, yeah, how he's doing. Don't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, it's uh, Trubisky's leading the way, but it's like literally not like anything. Like he's not blow. Trubisky's not blowing the way Kenny Pickett out of the water. Let's put it that way. Right. But I just but, think that's an interesting uh, fit. I think it is interesting too. I think uh, him to Pittsburgh is. That could, you know what? He's very talented. I think with those receivers and their running with Najee Harris, I think that could be pretty uh, interesting. I I think that you know it's just uh, uh, gotta just see what happens. I, I uh, to me, I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna stand pat where he doesn't get traded because of his contract. And if if there was a um, if his contract wasn't as high as it was, I think he would have been traded already someone would have traded for him already but uh to me i'm gonna hold with my prediction that he signs it mid-season with a team that needs a quarterback but due to an injury that's a great call i like that prediction as well what's a team that i think or i'm sorry a team that you think is going to uh, surprise this year a team that's gonna surprise this year i'm gonna you know what? I'm going to say I'm going to have to be a homer. I think the Patriots are going to surprise a lot of people this year. I think, uh, you know, last year they did go to the playoffs. Everyone's counting them out now. I think that they are going to figure it out and be a pretty decent team. I don't think they're going to win 13, 14 games. I think they'll win 11, and I'll be generous right now. But another team that I think is going to be sneaky good is the Denver Broncos. I think they're going to be really – or. I take that back the Raiders. So I think the Raiders are going to be really good. And if you saw how they played in the preseason game the other day, they were really good. They got depth, got running back. Their receiving core is stacked. Their defense is going to be really good. I don't think anybody's really given their defense enough credit. I think that, that whole AFC West is going to be scary good. But for me, I think the team to watch, in, obviously, the, the Chiefs and the Chargers are loaded. But I think the Raiders, I think you got to watch out for them. Trust me. You'll, you'll see in the first few weeks. 
Uh, for me, a surprise team. I mentioned them earlier in terms of the team I think could have potentially been interested in Jimmy. I really think that New Orleans may surprise some people and give the, the Buccaneers a run for their money in the division. Well, look, the, the Buccaneers haven't beaten the Saints in the regular season in the past two years. Tom Brady is 0 for 4 against the Saints in the regular season. That's right, he so is. He's, they're his kryptonite. I, I, he just can't do it. He just he plays really poorly against them. Dennis Allen's game plan, and Dennis Allen's the head coach now, against Tom Brady in those four games has been nothing but outstanding. So the thing is, with the, and listen, look at what the Saints are getting back. Michael Thomas in camp looks like he had. Michael Thomas hasn't played in the last two years. Michael Thomas come back. He's fresh. He's healthy. Tag teaming him with Chris Olave, who by the way nobody could cover in camp. He's lighting it up. Their receiving core looks tremendous. They also uh, have Kamara, but you got to watch out for his suspension. Right. That's looming. So I, I'm gonna have to agree. And you want nobody talks about the Saints defense. The Saints defense the past two years has been very good. They, they're, you know what, man, I like that. I really like that. I think the Saints are gonna be a sneaky good team. I'm, like nobody's gonna expect it. They're gonna be Jane, and I do think Jameis comes back and plays really well. Yes, exactly, Jameis. If he doesn't get hurt, they're in the playoffs last year instead of the Eagles. Yep, agreed, hundred percent. I th- also, another team I think is going to be actually sneaky good is the Eagles. I actually like what they've done this offseason. Interesting. Um, how about a team that you think could be a disappointment? Ooh. I have a couple for you for this. Uh, I'm assuming one of them is New England, right? No. I'm with oh, you okay. on New England. I'm kind of with you on New England, but um, I wanted you to take the floor if you, in case you took the Patriots. I do oh. think the Patriots are a double-digit win team. I'm with you there. So the Patriots, I do not think, will disappoint. I will say this, in my opinion, this year. A team that's going to disappoint. That's a really, really good question. I'm going to go with, in the NFC... I think, oh, oh my God. Well, I'm going to say a lot of, you know what? A lot of people are high on the Jets this year that they think they're going to come out of nowhere and be really good. I think that the, the Jets are going to disappoint. That's a, that's not really one flowing it out of the water. I think Jets fans will be disappointed again. They're not quite there. They're getting there, but not there yet. Right. Um, in terms of the NFC, I think, that, oh, I think, you know what, I think Washington's going to be really bad. I think they're, I think, uh, they're not going to be as good as you think they are. I'm going to go with uh, in the, you know what, uh, also, you know what, I will say this. You know what's a team that's going to disappoint? The 49ers. Oh, I, I was thinking them too, but I think there's a chance that uh, that Jimmy's on the roster in September, so that's why I'm not – um, willing to go with San Francisco. But if they cut Jimmy, I'm with you. But for me, you think they're going to be sneaky good. I think this team's a disappointment, the Eagles. I think that they probably win nine games, and that's not good enough for Philadelphia fans. So NFC disappointment, I'm going with the Eagles. I just yeah. think Dallas is better. Yeah, you know what? Dallas is – I want to see how – uh, the offense looks without Amari Cooper at number one receiver. Yeah, they have C.D. Lamb, who I'm very, very high on. I think he's tremendous. But uh, their receiving core behind him, James Washington, suffered an injury at camp last week. Uh, their depth behind it is, I mean, they still have Gallup. Um, they don't have uh, Cedric Wilson, who last year was a huge player for them. Uh, they do have Dalton Schultz still. Uh, but also, I want to see how Zeke plays because everyone talks about Zeke. Zeke hasn't been the sit that guy in twenty. Remember in twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen, where he was literally lighting up the league. No one could stop him. He's getting what a thousand. He's getting a hundred yards literally every week. Right. Uh, it's. I, I want to see how Dallas plays because Dallas. I know Dallas is a good team. I just want to see how they pick it up. But with the Eagles, to me. I just think that they're going to be that with getting A.J. Brown and Jalen. Nobody gives Jalen Hurts a lot of credit. 
I, I understand why. But I think he's an underrated type of quarterback, and getting him a player like A.J. Brown is just going to do nothing but help. And tag-teaming him with Devontae Smith, who is a really good player, and they still have um, Goddard. They still – they're running backs – they still have, I know uh, Miles Sanders said, don't draft me in fantasy. I know he said that the other day, hmm. uh, which I found hysterical. But I think that um, they could be sneaky good. I just want to see how their defense plays. They drafted a guy, Jordan Davis, and this guy is scary. He's a big guy, middle uh, D tackle. So he's going to be a guy who's going to cause problems for offensive line. So with the uh, – with your Giants offensive line, which is n- newly shaped on the outside, the interior, um, I'm not really sure how it is. So we'll see what happens. But I-, I understand why you said that. For me, I think I think the 49ers might take a step back. I think Trey Lance, is he's got talent. But I think it's not going to be as easy as people think with him. I know a lot of 49er fans are very high on this guy that he's going to take them to the promised land right away like Patty Mahomes did with the Chiefs. I don't think so. I, I'm so, I just don't see it right now. I could be wrong, yes. And you know what? Having Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel back in the fold is huge. And, of course, uh, Kittle. But I want to see how the how he was not a rookie. He's, he's starting now. Let's see how he plays out because there's easy ways to fool a first uh, quarterback who's playing in the first year as a starter. I know he got in last year a few times, but it's going to be a whole different ball game this time. Yeah, I agree. There's three teams in the AFC that I have pegged as disappointments. Want to hear them? Of course. All right, so Miami. I think Miami's going to be disappointing. Everyone. I agree. I, agree. I knew you would agree with me. I There was an AFC East team that has a flop, but it's not New England. It's Miami. They're plus 450 to win the AFC East. New England's 5-1. to one. Um, New England should have be- better odds or shorter odds to win the division than Miami. To me, I'm just not sold on Tua. And so here's, the, here's the thing. I think Tua has talent. His, he can throw. He can do a lot of things. Um, I just I, I don't think he could do it for 17 games. I just He can't stay healthy. He's got injury concerns. I think him getting – I think you get him Tyreek Hill. I think that's a huge get. And Tyreek Hill is just going to elevate your game because he could do so many things for you. But I, I will say this. In my opinion, I don't think two is the quarterback next year for the Dolphins. I just don't think so. I agree with you. And in the AFC North, I think the Browns are going to be disappointing. We talked about the Sean. 100%. And if they don't get Jimmy G, that's a potentially like a six or under win team for me. The Browns. They're going to, you know, they they are a team that would. When you spend so much on a quarterback and now his future is uncertain, it's going to be a problem. And when you look at um, their backup, Jacoby Brissett can get the job done. Yes, of course he can. But they're going to go up against teams that could annihilate them. they got to play the Bengals twice. They got to end this going to be a uh, problem. To me, I think that the Browns, uh, you did add Amari Cooper, that's huge. But I'm just going to tell you this, without Deshaun Watson, they're in a lot of trouble. They're going to rely on their defense and running game a lot, and you can only do that so much. Yeah, that's going to be, if you are a betting person and you um want to like bet on a Browns game, take the under in their games. Absolutely, 100%. I think. I do agree with the Browns being disappointed in Miami. It's funny, I didn't say these teams, but I was thinking them. Yeah, and then the last one for me is in the AFC, the Tennessee Titans. They were the one seed last year. I don't know about Ryan Tannehill. They drafted somebody. Um, they drafted the kid from Willis, Liberty. Willis. So Willis. I'm going to say Tennessee. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, I do agree with you with the Titans. I really do. Um, I think that... First off, in my opinion, I think they are completely out of their minds that they got rid of A.J. Brown. You basically traded Ryan Tannehill's favorite weapon away for a rookie that's struggling right now. Um, I I just don't think it's good business. Yes, he wanted to get paid, and he deserves to get paid a rightfully so. And I know they got a haul for him, but I'm sorry. I'm not a Tannehill guy. I never have been. 
I think he's decent. I don't think he's great. I don't think he's a Super Bowl. I don't think he can take a team to the Super Bowl. And I will just tell you this. If that team did not have Derrick Henry, they, we, they wouldn't be as good as they are. Yes. I think the Titans finish potentially sub-500 this season. Potentially. I'm not... I, I, I can see that too. I don't know if I'll pick it, but I'm leaning towards that way. So before we go, give me a random bold prediction for the season. A random just prediction for anything? Yes, in the NFL. I think the Chargers go to the uh, AFC Championship game. Oh, I think I'm going in that direction too, but that wasn't my bold prediction though, but I love the prediction. It's, uh, I'm very high on them. I've, uh, Justin Herbert is just scratching the surface with what he could do. They loaded up the defense. They got past it. They get uh, Khalil Mack. They needed a number one corner. They go out and get it in J.C. Jackson. Their safeties are secure. Derwin James wants a new contract. Go find a way to do it. And I'm just going to tell you, this offense, there's no – I'm sorry. The, the Last year, you saw that Week 17 game against the Raiders? How – Justin Herbert literally, what was it? He converted, what, six or seven fourth downs? Yeah. To me, to me, that makes a great quarterback. That's that's cold-blooded assassin. He was he had, he was literally on his, forgive my language, on his ass every time, and he got it done. He is, to me, I love Justin Herbert. This Charger team is going to be very good this year. I think, in my opinion, though, I want to see Brandon Staley make better decisions as a coach. I know he was a rookie head coach. Or learn from them, but I'm going to say this: I think that Charger team. Nobody's talking. I know they're loaded. Everybody's not really talking about them as much as they should. Beware, because they're going to come into this season and they're going to play tremendous defense. They're going to go after the quarterback, tag teaming. Uh, in my opinion, I think uh, Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack is better than Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram when they had that a few years ago. Uh, their secondary is tremendous. I love it. From the corners to the safeties, absolutely love it. Uh, the defensive line, I think, is underrated. This Los Angeles, everyone's talking about the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, they're loaded in the hay. They might be in it again. But the, Los, the other team in the other locker room, the Los Angeles Chargers, it's their time to shine, and I think it's, it's right now. I'm with you on the Chargers. I'm so tempted to pick them to go to the Super Bowl. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I might actually do it. And speaking of the Chargers, they're a part of my bold prediction as well. I'm going to say that every team in the AFC West finishes above 500. I think that's a, I think that's a lot. I, I agree. Um, wow. I think that the that division is stacked. Look at look, every team in that division. Look at the quarterbacks and that. Division. How crazy is that? And I do, I'm going to say this. I do think the Broncos are going to be really good too. I, Me too. I, I do. Um, I think that Russell Wilson is just going to make, make them better. Uh, I love their running game. They're, they're doing uh, that two-headed monster with Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. I uh, love their receiving core. They lost Tim Patrick. That's okay. They have K.J. Hamler who can step in, Cortland Sutton. And for a guy who nobody talks about, and I don't know why, is who I love is Jerry Judy. I think he's one of the best route runners in football. Just he's crisp in his routes running very very underrated in my opinion I think this year you're going to see him blossom yeah I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a lock but if nobody gets hurt it's certainly um in major play that everybody goes over 500 and I wouldn't be shocked that everybody in that division won 10 plus like is that possible uh it's going to be tough but I do think it's possible uh that division is the best, in my opinion, the best division in football. Absolutely. Right From the quarterback play to their defenses, all of them, I think the Chiefs, well, in that division, I do think the Broncos defense is okay. The Chiefs defense needs some work. But um, to me, when you look at the um, Chargers defense, it's just it's just loaded. Like, how, how could you not? I, I'm going to be... I'm going to be shocked if teams score even 30 points on that defense. That's how good I think they could be. Wow. All right, Bob. It was a pleasure to have you on today, and hopefully I get you back on during the season. Uh, you you already know. You just tell me when, and I'll be there. Absolutely. Have a good one, Bobby. You, you too. Take care. You too.